iOS 10 has a lot of big app changes and new features, but here are some tidbits that you may not have heard of. So first off, we have the iPad. Apple didn't really mention the iPad at the WWDC keynote, but it did get an interesting update. Now you can use two Safari windows at the same time in split view. You do this by long pressing on a link and then tapping open in split view, and a new instance of Safari with its own tabs opens up. This is a bit different than normal split view as you can't access it from the normal app picker, but it's there and allows for even more Safari. Another change in Safari is unlimited tabs. Now you can add as many as you want. And if you hold down on the tab viewer, you can close all the tabs at once. Mail also got some updates. On the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, there's now a three column view similar to what you have on the desktop and threaded conversations have a new look. And there's a toggle in settings to change whether the most recent message is at the top or the bottom, or you can turn off threading altogether. There's also a new filter button that allows you to sort mail by certain criteria and a new unsubscribe feature that makes it easier to unsubscribe from all that unwanted mail. Lastly in mail is a new smart move feature that predicts what mailbox you might want to move a message to. The phone app also got some updates. Now there is a call kit API that allows third party VoIP apps like Skype or WhatsApp to look much the same as a normal phone call when you get a call. And there's a new caller ID extension that can be used to screen calls for spam so you know before you answer. There are also now voicemail transcriptions, although this isn't enabled in beta 1, but it will allow you to read your voicemail instead of listen to it. iCloud Drive also got an update. Now you can view your Mac OS Sierra documents folder and your desktop from anywhere. And there is a new continuity feature that allows copy and paste to be transferred between your devices. So you can copy something on your Mac and paste it on your iPhone. In notes, there is now a new feature to collaborate with other users, so you tap on the add people icon and it lets you invite others to view and edit this note. The Apple Music app also got a huge update in iOS 10, but one smaller feature is the option to optimize music storage. Now you can select a limit of storage space that will be used by music, and songs that have not been listened to for a while will be removed if needed. The clock app got an update as well. Now it has a dark theme and there's a new bedtime section. This allows you to select the amount of time you want to sleep and then when you want to wake up. The app will then notify you when it's time to go to bed in order to reach that goal and you can see a timeline of your sleep in the app. Some smaller changes are a new keyboard sound and Game Center is now removed as a default app. The service is still there and you can access it through settings, but there's no longer a dedicated app or an icon. Lastly is the ability to remove many unwanted stock apps from your home screen. They aren't exactly deleted, although you remove them the same way, but it allows you to hide these app icons and if you need them again, you can re-download them in the app store. Although you can remove them, this can hinder some native iOS features. So for instance, if you delete the calendar and ask Siri to add an appointment, it won't be able to because there's no longer a calendar app. So those are some of the smaller changes coming in iOS 10. Again, this is still a beta, so changes are likely to come, but this gives us a good idea of what to expect when iOS 10 is released in the fall. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel to see when new videos are out and visit MacRumors.com for more. Thank you all for watching. I'm Mac Gonzalez with MacRumors and I'll see you next time.